So you know those characters whose up specials don't put them in a freefall? Like Sonic, or Mega Man, or Kazuya, those types? Usually this feature is balanced out by the fact that they can't use the up special again until they touch the ground. But as I'm sure you all know, if you get hit before landing, this property refreshes. It's all pretty basic stuff, so I'm sure you also know that footstooling an opponent with one of these unique up specials will also return their recovery. So what about phantom footstools? These are footstools that occur when an opponent is using a move or is just in a different animation that cannot be interrupted by a footstool normally usually shielding or attacking or anything like that. So in a sense, they didn't get footstooled, and rather they were just used as a source of extra jump. So the character themselves wasn't really affected, right? And yet, they actually are? Because Phantom Footstooling an opponent will restore their recovery. I remember seeing this in a tweet by Corian, which specifically referred to Kazuya, but as you can imagine based on how I'm framing all this, yeah, this is just how it works for basically all of the up specials that don't put you in the freefall. Or at the very least, it was for the ones that I actually tested. By the way, I just love how Mega Man looks here. It's, it's like he's frozen in space. Also, funny enough, even though Bayonetta's up special is in a similar boat, and refreshes if she gets hit midair, the thing is she won't get it back if she gets footstooled. Meaning, obviously, that she won't get it back if she gets phantom footstooled either. I imagine that there's something in the code that checks if the character was footstooled, but not if the character was put into a footstooled animation, meaning it wouldn't differentiate between a normal footstool and what we call a phantom footstool. So as long as they were jumped on, it'll tick the box and refresh the up special specifically, is my guess. And in case you're curious on a few things, for one, a move that doesn't deal knockback like Fox's laser will not refresh these special recovery moves. And yes, Phantom Footstooling during the up special will also refresh it. For some moves, you'll still have to wait for the end lag, but for others, it's a bit more effective. It's just kind of a weird mechanic. I wonder if anyone's ever been screwed by it in tournament. Okay, so continuing with the topic of footstools, this little stage builder setup was inspired by Switchcord, who DM'd me about it as a way to test a few things. This is technically unrelated, but I figured I'd mention that, yeah, unlike footstools, which we'll get into in a bit, you can wall jump infinitely without touching the ground thanks to this setup. If you try this under normal circumstances, you'll see that eventually you don't gain any height from the wall jump, and thus are doomed to keep falling and falling. But here we can stay afloat and see that the wall jumps keep happening. Now granted, I am an aging human being, so I still can't say for sure if these are infinite, but at the very least you can go on for way longer than you might normally see, so I'm content calling them unlimited. Additionally, while there's seemingly no buffer between when you can wall jump in different directions, there seems to be an approximate 2 second timer before you can wall jump in the same direction. This is regardless of if the wall is technically the same or different. It's all about direction. This isn't something I normally think about, so I just thought that was neat. But returning to footstools, it's pretty easy to notice that there's a hard cap to the amount that you can do before landing. But this setup makes it a lot more concrete to test. And actually, as a result, we can see something interesting. Here, Mario's footstool limit is very clearly 6. Just imagine that I'm spamming the jump button for, like, all of these clips. And yet, for Toon Link, the footstool limit was just 5. Same being for Link. And then for Sheik, the footstool limit was 7. Oh, and before anyone asks, yeah, the limit is based around the person doing the footstooling, not who you footstool. So even if you spread out your footstools to different characters, the limit is the same. Also, take a shot every time I say footstool in this video if you didn't want to live very long. Okay, so my first thought after seeing all this was pretty reasonably to assume that it had to do with character jump height. So first I chose three characters who have really good jumps. Falco, Greninja, and Zero Suit Samus. And all three of them had a footstool limit of 7 just like Sheik, who also has a really good jump. Then I tested some characters with really not good jumps. Those like Snake or Kazuya, who could only get to 5 footstools. Though when testing Jigglypuff and Steve, characters with even worse jumps, they could get only 4. I believe they're the only characters in the game who go this low, so I could be wrong. Now obviously I'm not going to test every single character, but I probably don't even need to. We saw earlier that Toon Link also had a limit of 5 footstools, despite having a pretty decent jump game, so it might be safe to assume that most characters in the game have a 5 footstool limit. But measuring an exact line is kind of difficult due to how weird ranking jumps are in general, since there's a difference between full hops, short hops, and aerial jumps, of which I'm not entirely sure which one is being put to play for footstools. And frankly, even when I choose to focus on any of them, there are some inconsistencies. For example, Fox's full hop and short hop distances are smaller than Palutena's, yet Fox is able to pull out 7 footstools, while Palutena can only get 6. 
And yet, Fox's aerial jump is far worse than Ness's apparently, yet Ness can only squeeze out 5 footstools. And if we focus on things like falling speed, Little Mac is right next to Fox yet can only get to 5 footstools, and so on and so forth. So basically, I feel like it's a variety of factors that come into play here, but also remember that these are hard limits, like limits directly coded into the game. Not limits based on practicality, since everyone in these tests are always in footstool range, right? So it's possible that each character is just given one based on their general type of gameplay or aerial mobility, rather than being determined by some algorithm. Though I will say, Fox's footstool limit being 7 is really interesting to me given how you'd probably never be able to get that many normally. You can usually get 4 in a row, sometimes 5 if you save your jump or are smart about it, but practically, you're really not going to be getting anywhere near 7, so yeah. These limits definitely don't feel practical sometimes, huh? But obviously I can't say for sure on that front, so for the time being, it's just nice to know that the footstool limits are actually very different per character. This is honestly really neat to me because I always kind of just thought that the footstool limit was 6, since I just like never really counted, and whenever I did do tests, I used Mario as the subject for that type of thing, so it's kind of... Wait, 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 did you catch that? Okay, so, I footstooled six times before hitting the ground, and even though I'm spamming jump right above their heads here, nothing is happening. And yet, immediately after I did this wall jump, Mario was able to do one more footstool, bringing his total from six to seven? But just one more. As much as I kept trying to replicate this, he could only do this one extra footstool. Yeah, sure, I guess that's a, that's a thing now. Awesome, just keep on piling the addendums. I guess this just means everyone's technically got a hidden footstool to add to their limit, only if they spam the inputs immediately out of a wall jump? So characters without a wall jump won't be able to take advantage of this, I guess. I tried this out for several other characters, and it was always true. If they could wall jump, then they could barely get out one more footstool. Even if you go to the other wall to jump in a different direction, it won't happen again. So. Wow, I have no idea why that's even a thing, but that's completely crazy and probably entirely impractical. If you have any ideas about anything that I've gone over or decided to test things out more thoroughly, as always, be sure to leave a comment down below. So, okay, next up, this prompt was sent to me by Titanium on Twitter, and it might blow your mind. Alright, so you know the sound you make when you footstool someone? Cool, we're on the same page. As far as I can tell, this sound is universal, and no, I will not test every single character combination. You do it yourself if you're so cool and infinitely alive. Alright, whatever, okay, now let me just cast a super powerful magic spell of evil magic. Alright, cool, let's hear it now. The sound is just, it's just gone. By the way, I was lying about the magic part, obviously. This isn't some obscure bug or glitch. This is just how it works, I guess. As far as I know now, he is the only character where this happens. And it's funny because as we saw earlier, he could make a footstool sound when jumping on someone. Just not the other way around. I'd love to look into the code and see what sort of spaghetti happened to make this not present for Falco specifically. Unfortunately, the script viewer we use for most things on this channel does not include the sound effects scripts or anything, so I don't really know. I mean, honestly, it's probably either the cause of some silly typo or just a peculiarly missing file in the code. Really, for me personally, what's more interesting is just how this isn't really talked about. Like, at all. So I guess that's just what my job is, huh? Spreading the gospel of important niche trivia like the disciple of the Lord spreading his good name. Oh, and if you want something to add on to that, the sound of the footstool for the secondary ice climber is there, but it's way quieter than normal. Yes, this is specific to the secondary ice climber, not Nana as a character. So it's also true when you use the alt that switches their roles. That's a clarification that might sound obvious to some folk, but remember that one piece of trivia where the timing of the home run swing voice line is different based on the character, not the role. Because this is consistent to the role rather than the character, it might be likely that they just made the footstool sound quieter to help differentiate the secondary from the primary, right? I feel like that's pretty intuitive. They're like kind of in the background in a sense, so it checks out. 
Also, in case you're curious, footstooling ditto makes the same sound and sound volume as whoever the ditto is copying at the time. So yes, that means it even makes no sound when it's copying Falco. Though, in testing this, I discovered something a bit... weird. Yeah, you hear that? A footstool sound. I guess phantom footstools are an exception to this muted sound glitch thing. Hands off my This is interesting alone, but... Remember at the beginning of the video where I made it out like the game considers footstools and phantom footstools like the same thing, and that's why they both refresh the weird up specials? Well, I guess this kind of changes that idea, since they're very clearly not considered the same thing here. Though perhaps it's just that phantom footstools are given a more universal setting, and they just happen to not mess up the sound for said universal setting. Still though, it's definitely its own thing, and I thought that was a really weird and funny way to discover that. Thanks, Ditto. Next, fun fact, did you know that when you stand on this pipe in Mario Maker as Piranha Plant, specifically with an alt that has a pipe pot, when you hold down for a few seconds, nothing happens. Next, and lastly, we can go back to footstools with this Steve tech by Takeuma, which is very stupid and funny. Here, actually, just, just watch. So I guess we're just ignoring that whole section where I talked about footstool limits and Steve being the lowest, huh? That's a joke, of course. The setup makes it so Steve technically lands on a block right before it disappears, which resets his aerial state. That's why this is even possible. So you're probably wondering a few things, but the biggest question is likely, is this an infinite? Well, ignoring the fact that Steve has limited resources, if we look into this frame by frame and get everything set up perfectly, Steve is only able to footstool Wii Fit Trainer after 14 frames of the dirt block disappearing. And Wii Fit Trainer is able to act after 13 frames since the dirt block disappeared. That means there's a one frame window where Wii Fit can input something to escape being footstooled. And given how footstools are prone to being turned into phantom footstools pretty easily, with good enough mashing, this isn't really a true infinite, I don't think. But it's funny, and it's possible that someone could get tripped up by it, so that alone makes it totally worthwhile to practice with frame-perfect execution, in my opinion. If you're curious, I tested for other characters and couldn't get it to happen for anyone other than Wii Fit. Either the character was too short and a block got placed on the ground, or just not at all, or the character was too tall and the block got placed in the air, but it stayed there properly. I tested a lot of characters who I thought were somewhat similar to Wii Fit and height and stature too, but I didn't find anything. I guess Wii Fit just has the perfect combination of height and footstool animation that allows for this interaction, which is delightfully pointless and random. If you discover anything new about this groundbreaking tech, be sure to let me know in the comments. But for now, I think we've had enough footstooling for one day, so I'm gonna end the video there. I appreciate you for watching. I didn't really intend for this to be a themed video around footstools, but I guess I just kept discovering more weird and niche things about the mechanics based on the prompts that I got, so it just kind of worked out that way. Which I like because it keeps everything wrapped up in a nice little bow, I guess. Oh, and while I'm here, I might as well say that I've got two videos of Tears of the Kingdom out if you haven't already seen them. I mean, there's a decent chance you've seen the first one, but the second one you probably missed. So go check that out if you're interested. To sort of go over my plans for all that, my next video will be another one about localization stuff for Zelda, which shouldn't take too long after this video is released since I already finished the script for it. Afterwards, I'll do another Smash video of some kind. Maybe even return to the wiki series in a more scattered, informal way like I've suggested before. And then I'll do one more translation tidbits video going over some of the most asked questions I've gotten in regards to Tears of the Kingdom, and then we'll just see what happens from there. So regardless of which type of content y'all like more, I think it'd be nice if it can maintain a balance. But obviously if these two next Zelda videos don't do well, then I'll just shift my focus back towards Smash primarily, which I'm not really bummed about, surprisingly. I like making these videos, and I'm sure I can find some ways to incorporate my Japanese studying into this series. So I appreciate all the support, and I hope y'all keep sticking around to enjoy the channel. Speaking of sticking around, I'd like to thank all my loyal, devout, amazing patrons Rain, Civil 700 Burbo, and everyone else for their support. Stay casual, and I'll see y'all later.